Okay, welcome to this tutorial to make yourself a laptop sleeve, or of course, it could be a sleeve for any gadget you've got at home or just some important papers that you want to store. So first off, you need to have your gadget and you need to know how big you want your finished um, sleeve to be. So if I just take this green fabric here, what I've done is I've cut my fabric so that it is a little bit bigger all the way around than my actual laptop. And I've added on about an inch to each side and I've ended up with measurements here of 14 inches wide by 10 and a quarter inches tall. So that's gonna be for that fabric. For my outside, instead of having two pieces, I'm actually gonna use this one piece of Trickster patchwork. Um, so this is actually slightly smaller. This is 14 inches wide by um, 20 inches tall. So when it's folded in half, it's 10 inches. Um, so the inside is just that little bit bigger to allow for the seam allowance that that's gonna have on the bottom edge that this will just have a fold. Um, so yeah, uh, 14 inches wide by 10 and a quarter inches tall, um, a little bit less because this bit's gonna be used in one piece. And then you also need to find yourself a zip and your zip is going to need to be quite a bit longer, about four inches longer than your piece of um, fabric, the width of your fabric, because it's going to be curling around like so and you want it to be coming down the sides. So I've got a 14 inch wide piece of fabric and I've got a 19 inch zipper to go with that. Now, um, for the outside, I've got some patchwork, which I've wadded and um, quilted onto some wadding. So that's one layer of protection. And then for the inside, I've actually got fabric and wadding as well. Um, so I'm gonna have two layers of wadding protecting my laptop. Um, you might want to think about what you've got at home that you can use. If you've got wadding, great. If you haven't, you could use felt, you could use an old wool blanket, um, you could use an old towel, just something to give it a little bit of protection um, as you're um, carrying it around. Okay, let's take the laptop away and we can talk about the first thing to do. So I'm just gonna take away one of these layers of fabric. So this is the lining for my um, laptop sleeve. And we're going to be inserting the zipper. That's the first thing that we're going to do. So what we need to do is to mark the middle of our fabric. And I've done that already with a pin. So I've got a pin just pointing out at the top. Um, I'll put another one in so you can see from this side clearly as well, like that. And then we're going to mark the middle of our zip and we're gonna mark stopper to stopper. So I'm just gonna fold that in half, stopper to stopper, find the middle, and I'm just gonna mark that with a pin as well. Okay, so I've got the center of my zip and I've also got um, the center of my fabric. Now, in order to create a nice curve going around the corners, you might also just want to put in place some reference points. So using a ruler and a fabric marker pen, I'm just going to mark one inch in on the top edge, like so, and one inch in on the side edge, like so. And I'm gonna do that on both sides. And so that means that when I do my curve, just use the ruler around this way, um, I'm gonna be able to get a nice smooth curve um, and I can also sensor check how my zip is finishing at the sides. So taking my zip, you can then decide which way you want your zip to load. So I'm just gonna load it this way for ease. I'm going to put my zip so that my center pins line up. I'm gonna take that one out and I'm gonna put that one through there like so. So my zip is now centered. And I'm also just gonna put a pin just before that bit there. And another pin just before that mark there. Because then what we're going to be wanting to do is to curve our zip around so that it restarts flush with the edge, the side edge at that one inch mark again. So I'm just going to put a pin in that side, like so, and do the same on this side. So I'm going to curve that zip round 
until it comes flush and then I'm going to put a pin in that side as well. So at this point it's a bit fiddly at the corners because the zip is sticking up. Now before we clip the zip to lay it flat I just want to check how my zip stops are doing. So I'm just going to take my ruler and measure this side and that zip stop is about three inches down from the top edge and just measure this side and that's exactly the same on this side as well. And the eagle-eyed amongst you will notice that this is actually an open-ended zipper. Um, I didn't have a zip to hand that was long enough otherwise but it's not going to matter because that, that zip um, end, that zip stop is going to actually be hidden in the seaming. So with your zip um, positioned nicely what we can now do is clip the tape to allow that zip to sit a lot flatter than it currently is. But we wanted just to get our positionings right before um, we did that so that we clipped the tape in exactly the right place. So using a really sharp pair of scissors, I've just clipped it in to the edge of my zip at about quarter inch intervals. So if I just hold it up, you can see there. And then that allows the tape of the zip to sit flat. And then if I just show you on the other side, that one's nicely pinned. And I'm now gonna put a few extra pins in just to hold that zip tape down. So it's just allowed the zip tape to spread out. And then I'll do exactly the same over here. So push those pins so that they're flat and then push that tape out and put some extra pins to hold it nice and flat. Ooh, that one's bent. There we go. And then one final check. My zip hasn't moved. It's still three inches down on either side. So that's fab. So that's pinned onto both our lining fabric and also the wadding that is underneath. And I can now take that over to the sewing machine and stitch that in place. So when you're starting sewing, um, what we need to do is have a little bit of clearance for the zip head, but we also need a little bit of space for the finishing off. So when you start sewing, you're actually gonna start sewing about a half an inch up from your zip stops. Um, so I forgot to do this when I started stitching for the video. So I'm just putting this in as a little insert now and then the video will move on to show you how I did sew it. But you do need to remember to start half an inch in from the zip stop at the start and at the end we'll do it as well, we'll finish early. Okay, so we're over at the sewing machine and we have our zipper foot loaded onto our sewing machine. And my needle is coming down on the left hand side of the zipper foot because my zip is on the left hand side of the zipper foot. Edge of my presser foot with the edge of the zip. Um, clearing this zip head, I might have to move it ever so slightly as I get to it, we'll see how that goes. Um, and then I'm just gonna go really carefully around this curve. My snips to allow the curve to happen uh, only went about halfway along the zip tape. And what I need to make sure is that my stitching goes beyond the end of the snip into the zip tape, otherwise that's gonna show on the actual project. So I'm just gonna go along really carefully, do a bit of reversing at the beginning and at the end, and try and keep my zip stitch position really nice as I go around that curve. <coughs> So a bit of reversing at the start. Take that first pin out and I might just move that zip head down a little bit. A bit further on, needle down into the machine, press a foot up and then take that zip head up out of the way. And then I've got the back of my presser foot just on the edge of the zip teeth. So just being really careful of the pins because they're all in at funny angles. Just going to take that one out, it's done its job. Just go round the curve, take that second pin out, that's done its job. 
and then we're on the straight bit now this is slightly easier keeping everything lined up at the top into the curve again so just being really careful of all of the pins that you've got in place I always say to people all of the things where they're tricky there's really no need to rush just going to stop about half an inch from the bottom okay let's take that out and cut it free okay so that piece of the zip is in and you can at this stage just push your zip out like this and you can begin to see the sort of curving you've got at the corners um, and if you're not happy with it, now's a good chance to go back and correct it. But that all looks quite good for me. Um, that, of course, is going to be the inside. Um, but it will just give you an idea of what it's going to start to look like. So with that piece of fabric attached to the zip, we're now going to put the outside fabric on. So I'm now going to take my piece of outside fabric. And it's a little bit easier this time um, because you're just going to match up your outside fabric with your lining fabric. So you're gonna push that zip down inside and you're gonna pin these pieces together. Because the zip is on the lining fabric, what you will find as you pin, if I just do it there, is you're gonna be pinning all three layers together. So it's making life a lot easier. So I'm just gonna go around and pin this in place. And then we're going to stitch around and you can either stitch from this side oops, it's a bit of a blunt pin that's better you can either stitch from this side or a trick is to stitch from the other side i've got a lot of blunt pins today and you can follow your original line of stitching So I'm just going to pin it all together and I am going to pin from this side and probably move my pins just so that I can make sure that everything is lined up. Push that right into the corner and then have my pin going across the corner like so. Okay so that's all pinned inside and then from this side we can see our stitch line that we're going to follow to sew that that all in place so you can either just take your pins out from the underneath or transfer your pins over to this side so that you can follow this line of stitching um, and then go back over to the sewing machine so i'm back at the sewing machine i've got all my layers pinned together my zips now sandwiched in the middle and i'm now stitching from the side where I can see the stitches from the first line of stitching that I put in and my intention is going to be to follow that all the way around and stick to as close as possible. So I'm just going to start with a bit of reversing and then just take your pins out as you go. needle in as you're doing the curve just going to twist the fabric round a bit and just push that zip down out of the way with some scissors So 
curves, you approach the curves, you can feel where the zip is. Obviously you want to avoid it at all costs. I'm just going to take that pin out because it's going to hit the needle. And just push it away from, just twist it round. So we've stopped short again, which has meant that we've not had to worry about the zip head, but that's going to be to our advantage later. And you can see that I've more or less got that line of stitching spot on, which is quite nice and quite satisfying. So that's one side of our zip now inserted, and I can begin to see what the outside is going to look like, and that's all looking quite nice. So our next job is to do exactly the same with the other piece of lining fabric. Um, so we're going to be finding the centre, like so, a little finger crease and pop a pin in. And then we are going to be finding the centre of the zip, stopper to stopper. So now just fold that round. So it's there. Pop a pin in there, and then we will be matching that up. And what you should find, if you've done it correct, is that by matching those two pins, you're also matching the sides of your fabric. So everything should be um, laying out nicely as it was the first time round. So I'm just going to pin this in place. Okay, just a reminder on the pinning, but again, I've marked my corner and I've clipped into the tape of my zip so that I can get it to lie flat around the corner. And I'm also going to just mark here a point on the zip which is level with where the seam starts on the other side of the zip. So that my two seams, both sides of the zip, are going to be at exactly the same place starting and finishing. So remember, clip around the corners and just mark that start and finish point on your zip as well. So with that side of the zip attached to the lining piece, I'm now going to bring this side of the right side of the fabric for the outside down on top, just like we did before. And I'm just going to pin that around and stitch exactly like we did before. Okay, I'm all ready and uh, pinned ready to the last bit of the, um, to the zip, but I just wanted to give you some tips for going around the curves. So when we're stitching, we're trying to go around the curve in one go. If when you pull your work out, you're not happy with your smooth curve, what I would suggest is putting it back into the machine and then just trying to do the curve piece by piece. So come down the straight and just start to do the curve and come off and then come on and just come down and do a bit of the curve and then come on and to do another bit of the curve or approach it from the other direction. It might be that you find feeding it into the machine in one particular direction is easy. But if you go round in one go just to anchor it, but the curve isn't as smooth as you like, just keep reapproaching it from different positions on the curve. It doesn't matter how many lines of stitching you have going around there. It's not going to matter. It's not going to show, but it just means that you might be able to smooth the curve out a little bit. And of course, you can always approach it from the other side if that makes it a little bit easier for you. So I'm just going to go and stitch this in and then I'll come back. OK, so I'm now all stitched in. Just touch the second bit. So what I'm going to do is access the inside, open the zip because obviously I've got this continuous bit at the bottom, but you might just be able to flick yours around. And then just have a look and see what is going on at the corners. And I'm quite happy with that. Uh, there, I haven't caught it quite as well as I would like, so I'm just going to go back to the machine. So one of my lines of stitching is not quite as good as I'd like. Um, so yeah, it's just about um, keep going around the corner, just working in until you get a nice smooth, and I can see there that that's a bit jaggedy and that needs to be a bit more curved, like that side is. So I'll just go back and sort that out. Um, and then we'll be on to the next step. So here's a good example of what I've been explaining is that outside line was my original stitching 
and I've just smoothed the curve off, but I came in at a slightly easier angle and I just tapered off. I didn't try and go all the way around the curve again. And now when I push that through, I've got a much nicer curve, which I'm happy with. So what you're going to do now is have your zip open so that you can turn it through and you're going to be bringing the right sides and wrong sides of your project together or the right the aligning and the outside rather so starting with the lining I'm just going to lay this all down and pin it flat and I'm going to have to remember to leave a hole in the bottom for stitching shut, or I could leave a hole in the side, um, entirely up to you. Sometimes people don't like to leave them in the bottom because they see it as soon as they look inside. Um, but because of what we've got going on with the zip and this insertion technique, I think the hole today will be best left in the bottom. So I'm going to get my big pins. And I'm going to put, oh, one big pin through there and one big pin through there and that's going to be my turning through and then I'm just matching up all my other sides and what we're looking to do it's easier to show you on this side is pin the sides right up to the zip but you want the tail of the zip coming through to the inside like so. And then you've got to replicate that on the other side, but you've got to remember that your zip is currently open. So I'm just gonna push that corner through and then just gonna bring these sides up. So I'm gonna pin from the bottom of my project and just keep smoothing like so keeping the edges together until the point at which that zip is there. And I'll put a pin right up as close to that zip as I can get it. But the zip is ultimately gonna end up in between the outside and the lining fabric. It's gonna be sandwiched in the middle of the wadding. Okay. So because I'm leaving an opening in the bottom and to get a really nice finish around the zip, I'm going to start at my opening and sew down that side. And then I will start at my opening and sew down that side. And I'm going to sew as close to that zip as my um, project will allow me to. When you're sewing your bottom piece together, um, you do have the choice of either working with a right angle at the bottom or you could curve the bottom piece um, just like you've curved the top piece where the zip is. Um, and if you wanted to curve the bottom piece, you would just put on your inch markings again and then use something round to draw a curve around and then just use that as your finished raw edge and do your seam allowance coming in from it. So just do your inch marker top, inch marker side, draw a curve, trim the fabric, and then that's what you would use as your guide. I'm actually going to stick with a right angle at the bottom. I quite like the idea of that um, with the curve at the top. Where you have got the curve at the top, um, before we turn through, so you could do it now or in a moment, we can just trim off that bulk. So using a sharp pair of scissors, oops, just trim away the excess in those corners. So that's one side done. And that's the other side done. Okay, so I'm gonna go and sew these together, um, keeping the right angle and leaving a gap there for turning through. And then I'm gonna do exactly the same on my outside pieces as well, but I'll show you that separately. When you're sewing it together on your sewing machine, it's a good idea to leave the zipper foot on so that you can get as close as possible to the, um, the area where the zip is. So the zipper foot will allow you more access, but I need to be coming down on the other side of it. So put the zipper foot on your machine, but load it so that you're coming down on the right hand side of the zipper foot 
um, and I'll just show you why that's the right way to do it. So let me just go back to my correct start position over here. Just line up with my seam allowance marker over here that I'm referencing. So a bit of reversing at the beginning and end of that seam. I'm actually just going to come stitch cross, pivot. That's lined up nicely. And then I'm going to come down here. And then as I approach the zip down here, I can just pull that out of the way. get as close as possible and then take that out of the machine so for the outside pieces I've pushed those right sides together and I've pushed them I've started at the bottom fold you might well have raw edges there and again I've pinned all the way up and I'm going to stop sewing at the point at which those two zip heads are so I'm going to stop right there and then on the other side, I've done exactly the same and I've pinned and I'm going to be stopping right there, right up as close to that zip as I can get. If you were sewing a bottom raw edge shut, what you do need to be aware of is start in the center and work out down one side and start in center and work out down the other side. And then you'll get the best finish at your zips because you'll be able to get closer to them when you finish off. Um, if you try and go all the way around, you'll find that one zip fits better than the other. Okay, so my sides are now sewn and it feels like it looks a little bit of a mess, but it always does at this stage of any project. So moment of truth is I'm gonna put my hand down inside. Um, what I can do before I do that is just finger press back my opening so that there's a nice line to follow when I come back. You could do that with the iron as well. So just put a bit of a crease in there. I'm going to put my hand down inside and grab and pull through and then push through so I can see a zip and I can see an outside fabric and an inside fabric so when you turn through I always put my hand back down inside and start to bring out my corners like so you always see a loose thread or two. So that's the corners through. And then that lining is going to go down inside. I'm not going to sew it shut yet because I'm just going to check that everything is okay. Push that lining down inside that side. Push it down inside that side. Give it all a nice smooth out looking good so zips working going nicely around the corners so on this side my zip disappears into the seam a few little threads there to trim off and on this side my zip disappears into the seam so that's exactly how I wanted it so it needs a good press but the moment of truth is does the laptop fit so grab the laptop slide it inside oh it's a perfect fit perfect snug fit so all i need to do now is go over to the ironing board and give that a really good press um, and then job is done if you find at the top that you want to top stitch you could do that but you will find that when you give it a press and start using it, um, these sorts of pouches really do form their shape. Um, and so unless your fabric is really catching in your seam, in your zip, um, it'll, it'll wear down and it will fall into place just perfectly. So that is how to make a laptop sleeve. I hope you've really enjoyed that. And if you make one, do tag us on Instagram or Facebook. You can tag us with the tag at Made and Making. Take care. Bye.